where I would be brutally examined. I was the only so-called patient in this uh, Victorian building. They would uh, put me out onto the floor. I was young, five, six, seven years old. They would tell me to build something with blocks. And every time, I would build a cemetery. Now, most kids would build a building or something like that. I used to build tombstones. And I found out years later that was part of cemetery programming, which is part of mind control. Years later, I confronted my mother with this. And, of course, she denied it and denied it. And then finally she said, well, it wasn't every Friday. She kind of <laughs> confirmed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, uh, and I found out that this was Dr. Green, a.k.a. Dr. Mengele. Uh, oh, yeah. Brutal, but I can say brutal, excruciating examinations on me where I just wanted to die when they examined me. My mother also brought me to a dentist. Uh, that performed oral surgeries on me and fillings without anesthesia and would not allow my mother in the room. Years later, just a fact, a couple of years ago, I had all these fillings extracted, all the mercury taken out of my mouth, and the dentist said to me, who did this to you? This is totally unnecessary work. Who did this to you? So again, I confronted my mother, and again, she denied it, but I said, hey, I have proof in my mouth that this happened, so you can't deny this. But, you know, there's just a, a, a certain line you can't go across with them, and so I, I just stopped pursuing it. Well, that's really uh, bizarre. Uh, so in some ways it sounds like you were put through some rituals uh, that they put Illuminati children through. Yes, yes. Um, so were your parents technically, uh, are, is your bloodline the Illuminati bloodline? Well, no, my mother is part uh, half Romanian, half Austrian. Um, and my grandmother was a gypsy, so that's no Illuminati there. And my father's family were, were communists in the Soviet Union. So well, that doesn't mean they're not Illuminati bloodline. If they were, it's an enigma to me because I certainly don't have any connections. What I do know, what I did find out from a researcher in New York City years ago, was that my family name, Sverdlov, means uh in Swedish, the sword and the leaf. It's actually not a Russian name at all. And he traced my family's ancestry back to the 800s in a town in Sweden on the Norwegian border. And apparently, they were part of a group called the Rus, which were a Viking group, which invaded what we now know as Russia and gave Russia its name. From Rus came Russia or Russia. And they lived in a city in Russia called Novgorod, which is only a descendants of Viking uh, families that lived there. So in effect, I found out that my family isn't really Russian at all, but came from a Swedish Vikings. Okay. Uh, well, that, that follows along the lines of what uh, are part of the Illuminati bloodlines. And the gypsy element is something that they – have tracked, uh, much like they do the Native Americans, because that combination, a mm -hmm. uh, certain combination will make you, uh, quite, uh, psychic and, uh, and, right. and, and aware on certain levels. So, um, so at any rate, you got involved in this program and, and you're being, um, you're sort of being prepared on some level. Uh, there's also an element of them using the orgone energy. Yes, open, um, open the portals. What they had was a technology where it was a square room, and in each corner of the room were tube-like devices, which were kind of, I would call them energy absorbers or amplifiers. And they would have the child uh, on a slab or a table in the middle of this room, rest restrained down, and they would perform all kinds of torture uh, to create extreme fear. And when they received the, the height of the fear, and the child was at the height of the fear, this, these four corner tube like systems would activate and literally absorb that energy and store it somehow. And then we're able to amplify that and project that out, um, through ELF and microwave transmissions to the general public as a form of mind control because they knew from Nazi experiments 
that when someone is in extreme fear or trauma, it opens up the mind to allow programming to enter. And that's why today we see all of this fear uh, mongering and all of these uh, um, traumatizing events happening in the world and the media amplifying them constantly to create a state of fear in the public so that mind control waves will constantly take hold from satellite transmissions. Okay. Well, that's one use of it. But uh, my understanding of the of the or- use of orgone is also to open those wormholes and to time travel, to make tom- time travel possible. Was that, did you experience any of that? That, you know, quite honestly, I'm going to have to say that's one part of it that is just a phase. They had other equipment uh, that used electromagnetic energies um, and even astral energies in order to accomplish time travel um, and, and portals and things like this. Uh, the Orcon energy, um, which is from Wilhelm Reich um, experiments, that was used mostly in sexual magic ritual. And what they used that for was to amplify programming and mind control um, patterns that they could then uh, imprint on the public. The actual technology for uh, wormholes, vortices, and time travel uh, and other things was more uh, technological than, than just orgone energy. Okay. Um, so can you describe what, what you were uh, experiencing in terms of the people that you met there? Well, I was young, as you know. I was uh, only in my teens at the time. And uh, there were many, many different people that came in. Uh, a lot of the children were anywhere from infants to uh, teenagers. There were adults. I would say I saw people as old as in their 30s that were involved in uh, these experiments. Uh, much of the people were considered to be expendable. In other words, uh, they would use them to the max, and that usually their bodies would fail or the mind would fail, and they'd be no longer usable, at least that's how it was in the very beginning. They, perfect, they perfected their techniques so that they most of the time knew when a person was reaching overload and then they would stop or, or even download some things so that they could add new things. Uh, personally, I had very little interaction with those who were in command because I was uh, you know, part of the uh, targets of the experiment. I wasn't in charge of anything. Uh, the other children that I met and even some of the adults were as used and abused as I was. Um, and basically, we were also indoctrinated. We were told that human beings or humanity was not capable of controlling itself. And so the work that was being done there was actually happy or favorable to human beings because it would help them to survive. And that's what we were indoctrinated with all the time. We also, on occasion, would see alien beings. Uh, over the 13 years I was there, there were many times I would see alien beings. I would see uh, people from other countries. I would hear other languages, especially German and Russian. When you say you, you would see alien beings, how did you know they were alien? Well, you could look at them and see they weren't human. You know, there were times I would see beings that looked reptilian. There were other beings that looked, in my book, Blue Blood, True Blood, I describe many of the alien beings that I have experienced in there. Um, there's many, many different beings. In fact, uh, there are untold or uncounted civilizations out there, and that's just in this universe. And then there are parallel uh, alternate universes of an infinite nature. So there are so much, there's so much different type of out there, it's incredible. Okay. Well, when you say, because uh, there are, you know, obviously, I, I think you, you know that there are many human-looking aliens, so-called yeah. alien, aliens. Yeah. Um, right. So this is why I'm, I was wondering whether or not you were actually seeing the ones that, that are not looking human or whether it is that because of your sort of second sight, your ability to see auras and so on, that you're always perceiving when they're not human anyway. Well, there are devices, for example, the reptilians have a device that they wear around their waist 
which creates a holographic image around them where they could look human. And yes, with energy sight, you can see not have a human energy field, absolutely. I must tell you, though, that the very human-looking uh, aliens, if you will, really did not have much interaction uh, in Montauk. They were human-like. They were beings who were humanoid, I would say, but not that I could say look completely human, no. Um, the universe, or what we were told in this galaxy, 70% of the civilizations are either human or human-like. Another 25% are reptile-like, and another 5% are anything you can imagine is out there. But even that 5% is still hundreds of thousands of beings of different species. So okay. Quite a variation. Absolutely. Uh, now, did you yourself get put into any uh, wormholes, time, tra- you know, do any time traveling, that sort of thing? Absolutely. Um, I wrote about that in, in the Montauk book. Um, one of the things they did uh, with me, uh, the two, I, I would say, most outstanding things, was one of them was to send me back to the time of Christ, where they actually wanted me to assassinate the, the Christ figure, uh, which I did not do. And they also sent me, and this was a wormhole, uh, to the Mars uh, underground and surface uh, with a, with a, something I was supposed to transmit over there. There were many, many different experiments that they would send uh, me to. Um, however, I was fortunate because where they sent me, they had a receptacle or receiver unit. In other words, in the very beginning of the Montauk project, it was kind of a hit and miss of deciding um, – what, where they were going to wind up. Every point in space and time has a unique frequency. However, you need to know what that frequency is in order to dial it in. So very often, they would send people with a device on them to a particular location to see where it was. Sometimes it was fatal to that person, never came back. Sometimes it was a benevolent or a good environment, and they would put the uh, receiver there as a beacon for the Montauk Project. And over the years, they would learn which frequencies dialed into which locations. They did have information from their alien interactions. However, they also learned some of that information wasn't true. They were given false information. So they had to find out a lot on their own. But I was fortunate enough to be sent to locations where there was receivers so that I knew I could get back. Okay. Uh, and do you have any... any uh people that were ch- children with you that you formed bonds with? Not at all. In fact, they discouraged that. They did not want any bonds formed whatsoever. They didn't want, they hardly even allow us to talk to each other. They didn't want any dissension or uh, people breaking away from a project or remembering because they knew that if you interacted with uh, someone or another child uh, over a period of time, it would form uh, chemical memories that would then break through when you're not programmed. And then you might tell people about what happened. So they discouraged that intensely. Okay. Um, were you uh, – let's see. I've got some a couple questions coming in from other people that I, I could ask you uh, – and and then and then perhaps we can go back to some of these subjects um, more specifically. But one of the questions is, can you see sickness in the body? What does it look like? And where do vaccines settle most? Well, that's a huge <laughs> question, and it lo- all looks different. You know, cancer, for example, could look like a black and blue uh, so- uh, spot, or it could look like a mustard yellow or mustard green uh, mass, depending on what it is or what stage it's at. Um, So that's a big question. Yes, I can't see those things, but uh, it all looks different depending on where it is on the body and what kind of illness it is. Um, The other question, what was the other part of the question? Uh, Where do vaccines settle most? Uh, Vaccines basically affect the immune system um, and also affect the brain, kidneys, liver, um, and can cause autism, ADHD, uh, di- diabetic conditions, all kinds of things from vaccines. Of course, I would never encourage anyone to take a vaccine, 
there's all kinds of chemicals and heavy metals in them that will eventually hurt you in some way. Okay. And 